Hey everybody, I am coming making this video message and I want to tell you all that God is our shield and buckler. The reason why I'm making this video message is just to remind you all of just how much God does cover us and just how much God does protect us. But what happens is that a lot of people who follow God will probably begin to question if God really is covering them or if God is really protecting them. And so if you feel like today that God is not covering you or God is not protecting you, then my question to you who doubt that would be, why do you feel like God is not covering you? Why do you feel like God is not protecting you? Could it be that because you've made mistakes, because you've probably disobeyed God, or because you failed at some things, or you broke a covenant between you and God, that you don't feel worthy of God's hand being on your life. Maybe you don't feel worthy of God covering and protecting you. Could it also be that the enemy has gotten in some of you all's ear and told you a lie? The enemy has deceived you into thinking that when something kicks off in your life or certain things don't always go right, that that is evidence and proof that God is a liar and that God is not protecting you. I am here to tell you all that God really is our protector. He is our cover. He is our shield and buckler. Now, before I get into the rest of this message, let me tell you all what a shield and a buckler is. A buckler is a round device. It's round and it's ha it has a handle on it. And typically you hold it in either your left or your right hand. And so you will see men of war back in biblical times or in medieval times you will see them hold the buckler and it will cover the upper part of their body it's smaller and it had like i said the handle on it so it will cover their whole face their head their neck and they can maneuver it around and they can bring it down and it can cover their legs and arms and feet and the mid section of their body and a shield is bigger. Shields come in different lengths, uh, widths, um, shapes, and sizes. But some shields, you can dig a hole in the ground, put the shield down into the dirt, and you can hide your entire body behind it. And so you all need to know that even though we don't see a physical shield or buckler in our life, God himself is actually and literally the shield and the buckler over us. He is the shield and buckler over everything and everybody concerning us. But I need you all to get deep down in your spirit and in your heart and in your mind. I need you to recognize this. I need you to receive it and I need you to believe it. Earlier this morning when I was praying, um, and I read like a couple of chapters in the word of God, I kept hearing the Lord say to me repeatedly, I am your shield and buckler. I am your shield and buckler. I am your shield and buckler. And so I knew just from an impression upon my spirit that things may not always go the way I expect them to go. And I know that it won't always be that the enemy won't try to raise his head. However, even in the midst of all of that, I still understand and I still know that God is truly my shield and my buckler. So I was also led to go into Psalms chapter 18. I'm just paraphrasing, but when you guys get the availability, I want you to go and read Psalms chapter 18 verse 2 for yourself. It is just talking about how we put our trust in the Lord. God is the horn of our salvation. God is our strong tower. God is our shield and buckler. God is our rock that is amazing and so I need you all to understand because I briefly talked to you all last week about how you should not be living your life in fear and paranoia looking over your shoulder and always terrified or even having your sleep disturbed because you don't know what's going to come next we know that the word of God tells us that unforeseen circumstances befalls us all but you gotta know even in that that God is still protecting us because when certain things kick off 
it could actually be a lot worse than what it could have been. Do you all know that you may come across somebody that is very volatile? They are very combative. You can come across somebody that's in the mafia. You could come across somebody that is the leader of a gang and they have a lot of weapons. They have a lot of people who back them up. They are known in the neighborhood. They have a reputation for people not messing with them or somebody not ever saying a cross word to them. However, it doesn't matter what they say to you. It doesn't matter what threat they make to you. You need to understand and know that God will shield you and God will protect you. One thing I don't want you all to do though, don't ever take advantage of God's grace and mercy and his protection. Just because we understand and we know that God is our shield and buckler, this does not mean that you go out and you meddle with people. This does not mean that you threaten anybody. This does not mean that you live your life, you know, and just start doing anything that you feel you can do. Just because you know for a fact God is always going to back you up god will not be mocked but what i'm saying to you all is that outside of some people who may live their life like that you need to know that you can walk in freedom every day that you live and breathe you don't need to be tormented by fear thinking that god does not have your back when we fail when we don't hold up on our end of the bargain when we even tell a lie to god when we break a covenant with God, when we don't, like I said, hold up on our end of the bargain, we need to know that even though we fail God and we disappoint God, God is still always going to do what he says he's going to do. God is still going to be God regardless and God cannot lie. He cannot lie. Lies are not in God. God is always going to be not only a keeper of his promises, but God is always going to do what he says he's going to do. God is even good to those who don't even believe in him or acknowledge him. That is not my opinion. That is in the word. And so since we know that God is this magnificent and this um, amazing, you all need to know and recognize. And if you don't know or recognize, you need to start tapping in to the promises and the benefits of the Lord. One of the benefits of the Lord is his divine protection. That is what you all need to know. I don't care where you go in this life. I don't care what mistakes you've made. I don't care what failures you've had. I don't care how tough another human being thinks that they are. I don't care how much money they have. I don't care how many people follow behind them. They can have an entire army against them. A nation could be against you. But you better hold tight and hold fast and recognize and understand that the power of God and the hand of God will supernaturally be your shield and your buckler. Please go and read Psalms chapter 18 verse 2. Meditate on that. And every single day that you get up and you live and breathe, you need to understand, you know what, God, I'm about to drive into a very dangerous neighborhood because I have to pick up a friend. We have to go to work. I'm about to go into a very dangerous gang field territory, Lord, because I have to go preach or teach at a church or I want to go visit a friend. Father, I don't have the money to live in a better neighborhood, but it is riddled with crime. It is riddled with robbery. It is riddled with drug addicts. It is riddled with alcoholics. But God, I know you are my shield. I know you are my buckler. Yes, Father, I know gang members. I know that they don't like me. I know a particular person in my family does not like me. I know that I have a abusive ex that made threats against my life. They made threats against the lives of my family members or my children. But Father, you are my shield and my buckler. You are my strong tower. I need you all to believe this. There are many things that are ahead of us that are about to transpire. 
We don't know when and we don't know how. But in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the shaking, in the midst of the breaking, in the midst of us seeing the enemy raise his ugly head, you better know that God is covering you. You better know supernaturally that God is your strong tower. You better know this and you better walk into it with all confidence, courage, and boldness. Don't just believe God and tap into the benefits of God by saying, well, I know God is going to take care of my finances. I know he's going to make me a millionaire. I know he's going to send me a spouse. I know he's going to heal me. I know that God is going to restore to me everything that the enemy stole from me. But then you're completely bankrupt and believing that God is protecting you and covering you. Some of you all, you have to wake up in the wee hours of the morning because maybe you don't have a car and you have to take the bus or the train to go to work. And it's not yet light outside. It's dark outside. Single mothers, who am I talking to? Some of you all, your day starts very, very early and you may feel uneasy sometimes. You may be afraid a little. You may sometimes look over your shoulders. I'm not telling you all don't be alert. I am not telling you all don't be be aware. I am not telling you all don't watch and don't pray. That is not what this message is about. What I'm saying to you is that sometimes our eyes cannot be in four, five, six, or seven different places at one time. Sometimes you can be at home or you can be driving to the store, but while you're at the store, you don't know what's happening on your block. You don't know what's happening wherever your children are. But you better know, you know what, God, I don't know everything. I don't see everything. I can't be around my kids 24-7. I got to send them out. They got to go to school. I have to go to work. You know what, Lord? I got to drive past this dangerous neighborhood. My children are going out with some of their friends. But you know what, Father? I rest in you and I trust you. You said to me, Right in Psalms chapter 18 that you're my shield and my buckler. I put my trust in you. I put my trust in you, Father. One thing, let me tell you all before I get up out of here. One thing that the enemy does, the enemy always wants us to doubt God. He always wants us to look at God and scoff at God and be angry at God and question God about why certain things did not go our way. And he will try to put us in a position to where we'll say, God, but you said that you were going to do this for me and you didn't do it. So I feel like you're a liar. I feel like you were not covering me and protecting me. Let me tell you all something. Don't ever believe the lies of the enemy. God is not the author of confusion. Satan is. You don't doubt God's hand covering and protecting your life. Now, there have been certain instances where the hedge of protection have been removed from certain people because God had to prove a point to the enemy. Let's take Job, for example. In the book of Job, Job um, was a righteous man. Job had not done anything wrong. But the enemy told God, the only reason why Job is righteous, I'm paraphrasing, and the only reason why Job believes in you and sings your praises is because you have a hedge of protection around him. But the minute you take that hedge of protection from around him, he's not going to be interested in you like that. He's not going to sing your praises. So to prove a point to the enemy, it wasn't to punish Job. It wasn't to make Job angry. It was simply to show the devil that, you know what, if I do take my hedge of protection off of him, I'm going to break down his health. I'm going to break uh, down his family. He's going to lose a lot of people in his family. His wife is going to tell him, curse me and die. I'm going to break his body out with boils. They're going to smell horrible. He's going to lose all of his riches. But Job still had a praise in his mouth. And guess what? It was a time where Job was upset at God. He went to God. He was questioning God. He was angry with God. And God told him to gird up his loins. God told him. He began to question Job. He asked Job, do you know where the thunder is? 
He asked Job, where were you when I was creating the ends of the earth? He started questioning Job, but Job in the end, he still had a praise in his mouth for God. And he said, though he slay me, I shall praise him. I'm paraphrasing. So Job still, still revered the Lord. He still loved him. And God showed the enemy. You can think and say what well, you want about my son. But my son is still going to ride with me. He's still going to love me. He's still going to believe in me. And so I'm telling you all just that quick story that I paraphrased. I'm telling you all that there will be certain things in our life that kick off. We don't understand it. We get blindsided by it. It makes us cry. It makes us question God. We may even have a season where we really don't even communicate with God. And we feel like we have been treated unfairly. You will on this walk with the Lord feel slighted by God in many instances. But when you get out of your emotions and when you get by yourself and when you continue to live and when you continue to just put your trust in the Lord and pray and always be alert and always be aware. You have to always be alert and aware. Again, don't take this message as I'm saying that you just go out here living your life any type of way, living reckless and threatening people and getting up in their face and doing and saying what you want. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that even though things may kick off, you better still understand that God has your back and that God is always going to be your cover, even when you don't hold up on your end of the bargain. Because that is who God is. God is the only. He is literally the only person in our lives that is the only constant. He is the only one that is constantly going to extend his mercy, his grace, his protection. Supernatural divine protection. So today I want you all to recognize that. I want you to believe it. And I want you to receive it. Stop being afraid. Stop looking over your shoulder. Stop believing that because today you may have fallen and made a particular mistake that God is going to toss you out in the trash. Stop thinking that God is still not going to be good to you. He understands that you are just a human being. He understands that we make so many mistakes. But he's never going to stop being who he tells us repeatedly in the word that he is. So guys, just tattoo this on your heart and remember it. And with all courage, with all boldness and unapologetically, I need all of you all who are viewing this video message to know that God is always going to protect you. Things could be so much worse in our lives yes we have gotten attacked on this walk attacks will come you will see things sometimes crumble attacks will come you will feel like god is not on your side but sometimes when you come out of yourself you can look at another person and they may have gotten the same attack that you did but theirs was a lot worse than yours You've got to even look at that. Everything happens for a reason. It's not our job to pick or compare and say, well, that person attack went like this, but mine's went like this. It's not about comparing. All I'm saying is that God is good all the time. And what he may allow for somebody else for his different reasons, he may not allow it to touch you the way he allowed it to touch another person. And so you need to have a praise in your mouth for the Lord at all times and like I said I can't say it enough he is our shield and buckler that is the video message well guys it's time for me to go because I have some other things to do the Lord will and I will be back with another video message if any one of you have taken offense to anything I spoke about in this video message it's okay it's all right I'm not worried about it I am not concerned because I know you will forgive me in the morning